Today's video is on probability and independent events. So by the end of the lesson, we're going to go ahead and be able to determine the probability of two or more events occurring together. Um, and the key to think about is independent. Is it that two or more events that are going to occur, they're going to be independent from one another. They're not going to have to do with each other. So they're not going to affect each other. With dependent, the first trial would affect the second trial. Okay. So what are independent events? Um, the event probably that one event occurs will not affect the probability of the other event. Um, how is rolling a die an independent event? Um, we can say, because when you roll a die, you can get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Even if you get a 1 the first time, when you roll it the second time, it's not like you can't get a 1 again. You can still get then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So we can show our possibilities Possibilities do not change after a roll. Same goes for flipping a coin. Just because I flipped a heads the first time doesn't mean I can't flip a heads the second time. So again, my possibilities do not change after a flip. Okay, it's still going to be heads or tails. Just like up here, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay. All right, so our example number one, we're just going to say, what is the probability that you can roll a three on a die and flip heads on a coin? Okay, so, and we're not going to use an area model on this one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use a number sentence to go ahead and do it. Um, so the outcomes for my first event, um, rolling a die, I'm going to go ahead and roll a 3. Out of the 6 possibilities, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, there is 1 possibility, 1 sixth. Okay? Same thing goes for my second event, my flipping a coin. I want to flip a heads. I can do a heads or a tails. So to get a heads, so 3 over here, it is a 1 out of 2. So when I think about how many outcomes they have together as well, um, actually, let's answer this first. What is the ratio we use for this probability? So we're going to go ahead and do a, we're going to say, say, we'll use a 3 and heads over, you can say, total roll slash flip combinations. Okay. And then to go ahead and answer the question of how many outcomes do the two events um, have together. Um, if I want to do a little tree diagram here, one, two, three, four, five, six, I could. You can get a heads or a tails, 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 and a heads or a tails. I could find that there is two options here, two here, two here, two here, two here, two here. There is actually 12 total combinations. Okay. So the question then, if we go back to it, it says roll a three on a die and flip a head. We have our three and there's our heads. So out of this 12, we have one out of 12. Okay. So I could either use my little tree diagram to find it, or I could use a number sentence by saying that the probability of rolling a three is one out of six. Okay, and we'll say heads. So that and makes lets me know I have to multiply, which is one out of two. Go ahead and multiply this together, and you get one out of twelve. You get the same answer. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn one out of twelve into a decimal, which is our 0 .083 repeating. I'm trying to do a percentage by multiplying by 100, and I get an 8.3% chance. Okay. So definitely an unlikely chance, but it is possible. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to use multiplication just like we did before. Okay. This time we're going to go ahead and talk about getting a heads. 
and then we're going to go ahead and roll a 12-sided die, and we're going to go ahead and get a 12. Okay. So first question is, what is the probability of the first event occurring? We have a heads or a tails. We want to get one out of two. Okay. We're looking for our heads. Then I have the probability of my second event occurring. I need to go ahead and get a 12, but my possibilities are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 possibilities. And the only possible one I need is my 12, so 1 out of 12. So what operation are we going to use to determine the probability of these events occurring together? We need a heads and to roll a 12, so we know we're going to go ahead and multiply. And so I'm going to go ahead and do 1 over 2 times 1 and 12. Gives me 1 over 24. That those are going to, that's going to occur. If I turn that into a fraction there, I get an answer of, oops, fraction will be 1 /24. If I turn into a decimal, my answer is 0 0.0416, and my 6 keeps repeating. And I'm actually going to take that 6 and I'm going to go ahead and round my 1 to get my an answer of 0 0.042. Just round to the nearest thousandth there. And when I multiply by 100 to get my percent, I get an answer of 4.2% chance that that would happen. My next one, for example, 3 is what is the probability that you can pick a red card, put it back in the deck, and pick a black card? So I'm going to be replacing it. Unlike my dependent events, my independent events, I'm replacing it. So if I remember about a deck of cards, I have 52 cards. Okay, as far as red cards go, there are 26 of them. And as far as a black card goes, there is 26 as well. Okay, it's evenly split. So what is the probability for the first event to occur? Um, that's picking a red card is 26 out of 52. Can actually simplify that to 1 over 2. The probability of my second event occurring, because I put the card back, I still have 52 in there. And again, it's 26 to get a black one, which also gets simplified to 1 half. So what operation are we going to use to determine the probability of these events? Remember, I need to do a red card and a black card. Remember, I have that and word there, I multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and do half times a half. That's my red card. That's my black card, and I get an answer of one fourth. So my fraction is one fourth. Turn to a decimal, 0.25. Multiply by 100 to get my percent, and I get an answer of 25 percent. Okay, example number four: What is the probability you can pick the Ace of Hearts, put it back in the deck, and pick the King of Clubs? Okay. So for this one, again, it's 52 cards. Um, for the first event to occur, my ace of hearts, there is only one ace of hearts in that deck of cards. So it is one out of 52. I'm going to go ahead and put that ace of hearts back, which means my second event is going to occur out of 52 cards. And then there is only one king of clubs. So again, that probability is also one out of 52. So the probability of doing an ace of hearts and a king of clubs lets me know that I have to multiply them. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply those two. That's my operation. And I do 52 times 52 down there. In my denominator, I get a fraction of 1 out of 2,704. There's only one chance for me to do that. And if I go ahead and turn that into a decimal, all right, I get an answer of point one two three. And then 3, we'll do 3, 7, which actually gets kind of rounded to 0 0.0004. So I have a 0.04% chance. Because to get to my percent, I'm multiplying it by 100. So 0 0.04 chance of picking those two cards. So it is very, very, very unlikely that will happen. Very, very rare. But it could happen. So what I'd like you to go ahead and do right now is pause your video. Go ahead and figure out these five problems here. Remember that you need to write a fraction, decimal, and percentage for all three, and then you can go ahead and round to the nearest thousandth when it's necessary. Okay. My first one, I have a probability of rolling an even number and flipping the tails. 
case, as full is a half probability. So half times half is 0.25 or 25 percent. Number two, probability of picking two vowels with a replacement from the word probability. First vowel would be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ooh, should be 4 out of 11. Okay. So let's get rid of that. And I'm going to put it back and I'm going to go ahead and pick another one, which should be 4 out of 11. I'm just going to erase, cross this whole thing out. So we should do 4 elevenths times 4 elevenths, which is equal to 16 over 121. Go ahead and plug that in. And I get an answer of 0.132, which is equal to 13.2%. Number three, what is the probability of picking an odd number, putting it back, and then picking a multiple of 10 from the numbers 1 through 30? So we know that there are 15 odd numbers out of 30, so that gives us a probability of half for my first one. I'm going to put the card back and then go ahead and pick a multiple of 10. I can do 10, 20, or 30, so there's three options, so it simplifies to 1 out of 10. I'm going to go ahead and multiply them together because I have to do both of those. There's that and in there. Half times tenth is one twentieth, which is 0 0.05 or 5%. Number four, probability of rolling a die three times, all coming up an odd number. So my probability to get an odd number is half for each of the rolls, okay? And then I do half times half times half, equaling one eighth or 12.5%. And lastly is the probability of picking a red gumball. Replace it and then choose a blue gumball from two red and three blue. So my red gumball is two-fifths, my blue gumball is three-fifths, multiply them together, and I get six-twenty-fifths of a 0.24 or 24%.